Good day, my Ecom learners, and congratulations to each one of you because you were able to surpass the two weeks of online classes for school year 2021-2022. I welcome you all once again to my YouTube channel, and today we are going to talk about the essentials and basics of oral communication. This video lesson will focus on achieving three objectives. The first is to define what is oral communication and the second is to identify and enumerate the functions of oral communication and the last one is to explain the process of oral communication to start with let us answer the question what is communication communication actually is a process of exchanging ideas from one person to another and that is the basic and the most common definition of communication. Further, it came from the Latin word communicare, which means to share or to make something common. So, ang ibig sabihin, hindi natin masasabing may komunikasyon kung walang naganap na palitan ng impormasyon sa pagitan ng dalawang tao or kung hindi sila nakabuo ng common or shared understanding. Meaning to say, Kung hindi nagkaroon ng parehong pag-unawa ang taong involved doon sa communication process. For you to understand it more, watch this. Excuse me? Hello? Hey! I'm a human being! If you don't want to help, at least say so. Hello, I am deaf. I may have trouble comprehending you. Thank you for your consideration. Hmm? Usually, I'd read your lips to understand you. Oh. oh. If you like, you could let this convert your speech to text for me. Okay. Could you tell me how to get to Want to try again? Attention passengers, all is well. Thank you. Low power, shutting down. Attention passengers, line 4 is delayed for one hour. Thank you. Considering the video clip, masasabi natin na may nag-exist na communication between the two ladies. Pero may malaking kakulangan sa proseso ng palitan ng impormasyon. There was no shared understanding at the beginning which made the communication a poor one. There were two reasons demonstrated. Una, ang tumatanggap ng mensahe o ang receiver ay deaf and mute who depends on the speech-to-text application on her cell phone. Obviously, there was no commonality in terms of the expressions of ideas. Ang isa ay nakakapagsalita while the other one could not literally deliver and hear a message normally. Pangalawa, the noises around the area na naging cost kung bakit hindi naging maayos ang pag-convert ng mensahe ni sender para kay receiver. This eventually led the two to spend so much time looking for ways to understand each other in the communication situation. The communication then is ineffective and a failure dahil hindi nila na-meet ang objective nila which is accordingly parehong sumakay ng train papunta sa Happy Valley. 
para masigit pa ninyong maunawaan kung ano nga ba ang komunikasyon, ating alamin ang ilan sa mga pinakamahahalagang katangian nito. So let's talk about the nature of communication. Communication is a process. May sinusunod itong pamamaraan para maging epektibo. And this process takes place when two or more people exchange ideas or information at iyong ideas and information na ito ay tinatawag nating message. Then, this exchanging of message is done either through written, spoken words or verbal, or actions or we call as nonverbal. Both verbal and nonverbal can be used at the same time which had been demonstrated in the short clip previously. Gumamit ng nonverbal ang dalawang nag-uusap upang sila ay magkaintindihan. Communication is dynamic. It is not constant and static. It is ever-changing. At yung pagbabago na tinutukoy natin ay depende sa communication process we are engaging. Example, katulad ng video clip na inyong napanood kanina, kung saan may isang babae na nagtanong sa isang pasahero sa train station kung paano sana siya makakarating sa Happy Valley. Pero deaf and mute ang kanyang napagtanungan. And because the normal one does not seem to know how to use sign language, there had been a communication failure. So, meaning to say, communication is dynamic because it does not solely depend on words we say. Minsan, kailangan natin na humanap ng ibang paraan upang maunawaan tayo ng ating kausap at kumagamit din tayo ng iba't ibang paraan to communicate, especially now in the modern world where social media and technology have both given us a lot of means to transmit information. Further, communication is systemic. We value culture as system and it influences the way we communicate. Halimbawa, for Filipinos, it is very rude or bastos para sa atin ang makipag-usap sa mga nakatatanda nang hindi gumagamit ng po at opo to show respect and politeness. But it may not be the same for others. Another is, communication is symbolic. The language or medium we use in the communication process includes both the verbal and non-verbal symbols. Gumagamit tayo ng sound, such as the sound of words we utter. Bodily gestures, facial expressions, hand movements. These are what we call communication symbols. Next, we have, communication is meaningful. Ang target natin is shared meaning. So, ibig sabihin, kapag walang shared understanding sa proseso ng komunikasyon, we may say that there is no communication since the goal of communication is shared understanding. Communication is relational. It influences relationships and vice versa. Yung paraan ng pakikipag-usap natin sa mga tao sa ating paligid ay nakadepende sa relationships we have built with them. For example, sa kaibigan, we talk casually. We joke around with them. Pero kung ang kausap natin ay teacher natin, we don't speak the way we do with that of our peers or friends. One more is, communication is presentational. It reveals a person's characteristics. The way we speak and talk may show what and who we are. For instance, nakikita natin ang kaibahan ng generation ngayon sa mga nagdaang henerasyon. Dahil sa kanilang paraan ng pagsasalita, kung saan sila ay gumagamit ng mga lingwahe na kaiba sa mga naunang kabataan noon. Isa pang halimbawa, kapag ikaw ay nasa opisina, you avoid using informal words in professional settings because you want to present yourself in professional manner na ayon sa iyong trabaho. At kung ating iisa-isahin ang mahalagang katangian ng komunikasyon, ito ay ang mga sumusunod. Communication is a process. Communication is dynamic. Communication is systemic. Communication is symbolic. Communication is meaningful. Communication is relational. 
and communication is presentational. At this part of the lesson, let's enhance our knowledge about the process of communication. Basically, communication process is cyclical as it begins with a sender and ends with a sender in the form of feedback. It is a continuous process which mainly involves three major basic elements, the sender, the message, and the receiver, plus the added two which are the channel and the feedback. Now let's discuss these elements. First, we have the sender. Sa kanya manggagaling ang mensahe o impormasyon. The next is the message o yung tinutukoy natin na ideya na siyang dahilan ng pagsisimula ng proseso ng komunikasyon. The third would be the receiver. Ito naman yung tinutukoy natin na tatanggap ng mensahe mula sa sender. At ang dagdag ni elemento ay ang channel na tumutukoy naman sa paraan ni sender para maiparating ang kanyang mensahe. At ang sumunod na dagdag elemento ay ang feedback o ang tinatawag nating sagot ng tumanggap ng mensahe mula sa sender. And that signals the basic elements of the communication process. That will be all for today. If you have questions, you may write it in the video's chat box. Thank you for joining me once again. Bear in mind that happiness is a choice we make. So always wear a happy heart.